Chapter 2 Recent Instruction Concerning Schools in the South Subjects to be Taught in These Schools There is constant danger among our people that those who engage in labor in our schools and sanitariums will entertain the idea that they must get in line with the world, study the things which the world studies, and become familiar with the things that the world becomes familiar with. This is one of the greatest mistakes that could be made. We shall make grave mistakes unless we give special attention to the searching of the word. Strong temptations will come to many who place their children in our schools because they desire the youth to secure what the world regards as the most essential education. Who knows what the most essential education is unless it is the education to be attained from that book which is the foundation of all true knowledge. Those who regard as essential the knowledge to be gained along the line of worldly education are making a great mistake, one which will cause them to be swayed by individual opinions that are human and erring. To those who feel that their children must have what the world calls the essential education, I would say, bring your children to the simplicity of the Word of God, and they will be safe. We are going to be greatly scattered before long, and what we do must be done quickly. The light has been given me that tremendous pressure will be brought upon every Seventh-day Adventist with whom the world can get into close connection. We need to understand these things. Those who seek the education that the world esteems so highly are gradually drifting farther and farther from the principles of truth until they become educated worldlings. At what price have they gained their education? They have parted with the Holy Spirit of God. They have chosen to accept what the world calls knowledge in the place of the truths which God has committed to men through his ministers and prophets and apostles. And there are some who, having secured this worldly education, think that they can introduce it into our schools. But let me tell you that you must not take what the world calls the higher education and bring it into our schools and sanitariums and churches. I speak to you definitely, this must not be done. If we will look to him, the Lord will help us to understand what constitutes true higher education. It is not to be gained by putting yourself through a long course of continual study. In such a course, you will get some things that are valuable and many things that are not. The Lord would have us become laborers together with Him. He is our helper. He would have us come close to Him and learn of Him with all humility of mind. Do not regard as most essential the theoretical education. Instruction to Students and Teachers of Union College, May 1909 the presentation in our schools should not now be as it has been in the past in introducing many things as essential that are only of minor importance. The light given me is that the commandments of God, the will of the Lord regarding each individual, should be made the chief study of every student who would be fitted for the higher grades of the school above. Private Letter, January 1909 Work for True Higher Education Now is our time to work. The end of all things is at hand. By pen and voice, labor to sweep back the false ideas that have taken possession of men's minds regarding the higher education. Personal Letter, June 1909 I do not say that there should be no study of the languages. The languages should be studied. Before long there will be a positive necessity for many to leave their homes and work among those of other languages, and those who have some knowledge of foreign languages will thereby be able to communicate with those who know not the truth. Some of our people will learn the languages in the countries in which they are sent. This is the better way. And there is one who will stand right by the side of a faithful worker to open the understanding and to give wisdom. If you did not know a word of the foreign languages, the Lord could make your work fruitful. Instruction to Students and Teachers of Union College, May 1909 Mission schools should be started, for they will hasten the end. 
Every possible means should be devised to establish schools of the Madison order in various parts of the South, and those who lend their means and their influence to help this work are aiding the cause of God. I am instructed to say to those who have means to spare, Help the work at Madison. You have no time to lose. Satan will soon rise up to create hindrances. Let the work go forward while it may. Let us strengthen this company of educators to continue the good work in which they are engaged, and labor to engage others to do a similar work. Then the light of truth will be carried in a simple and effective way, and a great work will be accomplished for the Master in a short time. An Appeal for the Madison School Enter the Highways and Byways The light is given that we must not have special anxiety to crowd too many interests into one locality, but should look for places in out-of-the-way districts. The seeds of truth are to be sown in uncultivated centers. While such great expense is incurred to enlighten the people of foreign tongues, we are all to be just as wide awake to reach, if possible, the foreigners and the unconverted in our own land. There is missionary work to be done in many unpromising places. The missionary spirit needs to take hold of our souls, inspiring us to reach classes for whom we had not planned to labor and ways and places that we had no idea of working. Personal Letter, October 1908 Where are the workers for these needy places? The church members should be drawn out to labor. I am instructed to say that the angels of God will direct in the opening of fields nigh as well as afar off. God calls upon believers to obtain an experience in missionary work by branching out into new territory and working intelligently for the people in the byways. The Lord is certainly opening the way for us as a people to divide and subdivide the companies that have been growing too large to work together to the greatest advantage. Personal Letter October 1908 How to Start Work in the South Properties will be offered for sale in the rural districts at a price below the real cost because the owners desire city advantages, and it is these rural locations that we desire to obtain for our schools. Personal Letter <laughs> 